الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ولا آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد all praise and thanks be to Allah subhanahu wa taala that alhamdulillah he's gathered us again in this masjid and inshallah taala the only reason we came here was to seek knowledge about the deen of Allah the big benefits inshallah I'll present two ahadith that why these blessings these gatherings are such a big blessing of Allah subhanahu wa taala the first hadith that we need to congratulate ourselves for having the tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come and attend such gatherings. The first hadith is where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever travels a path to seek knowledge, Allah will make easy for him a path to paradise. So when you're treading a path, when you're going somewhere to seek knowledge of the deen of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for you to follow the path to paradise. The second hadith is gatherings where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned, where he is remembered. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when a group of people assemble for the remembrance of Allah, on such gatherings, the angels surround them with their wings. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala envelops them. The sakina tranquility descends upon them and the fourth benefit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a mention of them before those who are near him so we are sitting here remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as per this hadith our zikr we are being mentioned Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions us with a gathering better than this gathering who is around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the angels so, so this is a very big benefit of such gatherings where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is remembered. We should make our utmost effort to attend them. So inshallah ta'ala, today we are trying to understand that what's the importance of having the right understanding of the deen of Allah. There is a hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, to whomever Allah wills goodness. So if Allah wills good for you. To whomever Allah wills goodness. He grants him understanding of the religion. So this understanding of the religion is granted to a person whom Allah wills good for. And the another hadith where the Prophet wasallam said. Allah bestows the worldly possessions of this dunya. To those whom he loves and to those whom he does not love. But he only bestows his deen to whom he loves. So if you have everything from the dunya, if you have the possessions of the dunya, you have the best of the cars, you have the best of the houses, that doesn't mean Allah loves you. Maybe Allah loves you, maybe he doesn't love you. But if you have the right understanding of the religion, then this is a sign that Allah loves you. Allah gives this only to those whom He loves. So when we are seeking knowledge to get the right understanding of the religion, we need to strive our best. And if Allah blesses us with this tawfiq that we are trying to strive and we are trying to understand the religion, this is a sign that Allah loves us. So this is something to motivate us that we need to keep up with learning the deen of Allah and Improving our understanding of the religion. Another ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, If you should love Allah, then follow me. So Allah will love you and forgive you your sins. So the condition, if we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to love us, what do we need to do? We need to follow the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the path to salvation, that we need follow his sunnah, we follow his way, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with the right understanding of Al-Islam. And among Islam, what is the first principle, what is the first fundamental of belief? Imanu Billah, to believe in Allah, 
right? The first thing, what is belief in Allah? La ilaha illallah, right? Tawheed. Can we survive without having the right understanding of Tawheed? We just mentioned the right understanding of the deen is important. The first principle, the first fundamental thing to understand is Tawheed, is the belief in Allah. So we need to rectify our understanding of La ilaha illallah. Why should we do that? What if it is incorrect? What will happen? What are the chances? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Maid ayat number 5 وَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالْإِيمَانِ فَقَدْ حَبِتْ عَمَلُهُ And whoever rejects faith and if your belief is not correct if it's incorrect if you made a mistake in believing in Allah if instead of believing in Allah that the rain comes from Allah you believe the rain came from the stars what will happen? Whoever rejects faith, all their good deeds will be void in this life. Everything that you do, you do all the prayers, you do all the hajj, all your umrah, all your actions. If your belief is incorrect, all that becomes null and void. You will not get anything if your belief in Allah is not correct. If your belief in Tawheed is not correct. So it's very important to learn this thing that my belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. It's the right understanding. As Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Al-Imanu an tu minuna billah. Iman is that you believe in Allah. Another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he was asked, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, what is the best deed? So we are talking here about an action. What is the best, best deed to do? What is the best action to do, right? The Prophet ﷺ replied to believe in Allah and His Rasul ﷺ. So the best action to do is to believe in Allah. So belief is part of our actions. It's the first action that we need to do. Even before we need the prayers, the zakat, the hajj and the umrah. First thing is to believe in Allah. So we need to believe, make sure our action is correct. And then we also know the famous hadith, which always the scholars mention, that actions are by intentions. So actions are by intentions. So you will get what was intended. So believing in Allah is an action. And you need to have an intention behind this action for it to be accepted. So if I ask ourselves, why are we Muslims? If you ask common faults among the Muslims, why are you Muslims? What is the intention behind you being a Muslim? Why do you go and pray? If your answer is, I do it because this is what I've been taught since childhood. I do it because my family was a Muslim. Is this the right answer? Is this the right intention to have to believe in Allah? The action is questionable. The intention behind is questionable. That's why we need to learn the right belief. The right answer to that should be, we believe in Allah because it's a command of Allah. And following the command of Allah is obligatory upon us. We have to believe in Allah. There are so many ayat which talk about believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why were all the prophets sent to this world? Before the Ramadan, we went through the lives of all the prophets. What was their dawah? What did all of them call to? Worship on Allah and do not worship at Tagut. So it's a command of Allah. That's why we believe in Allah. That's why we worship Allah. Because it's a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the whole purpose of our life. To worship Allah alone. So we are Muslims because Allah has created us to worship Him alone. So we need to rectify our intention behind being Muslims. Just to understand the importance of following the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is a very beautiful introduction by Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where he gives a where he says that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given three things from Allah. The uniqueness, the tamayyus, the uniqueness of his farameen, of his commands, of his sunnah, of in hadith are three things. There's three things which are very unique about his commands, about the sunnah. The first one, that they are 
fawahte al khair that they open the doors to goodness his sunnah his ahadith are the keys that open the doors to goodness so if you want goodness if you want khair then you need to follow the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his commands his farameen are jawamihul khair they are very concise and very clear one hadith can open the doors of clarity for you and set the tone right for anything that you want to understand for example one hadith where prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man amila amalan laysa alayhi amruna fa huwa rad one sentence and this sentence sets the methodology a uh, such an important concept of following the deen the translation of that is whoever performs a deed that is not in accordance with our matter it will be rejected this is qaul e faisal this is the final verdict this is engraved in stone any action that you do if it's not it doesn't have the stamp doesn't have the attestation of muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that if he did it it will be rejected so this is the concise and clarity of the sunnah of the ahadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam one statement sets everything right whether you be a person from the east or from the west whether you are an arab or a non arab whether you are a scholar or a common man any action that you do if it doesn't have the attestation that this is what was done by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it's going to be rejected and the third benefit of all his ahadith is that they are khawatim al khair that they lead to a good ending so if you follow the sunnah you will have the best of the endings verily deeds are only judged by how they were at the end of life so if you want a good ending from this world you need to follow the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so these three benefits of following the ahadith and the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam are so important for us if you take another example of the hadith where prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said la ilaha illallah is miftahul jannah is the key of jannah although there are some kalam on the chain of narration of this hadith but it also gets support from the another hadith in muslim where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said there is no one among you who does wudu so you do wudu right wudu according to what the way of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the way he did it and does it well then he says ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu so this is what we need to say after making wudu right so if we do this so the hadith says when you do wudu and you do and when you recite this the eight gates of paradise will be opened for him so what was the statement the statement was the statement of la ilaha illallah right? we testify to la ilaha illallah and it the hadith says that all the eight gates of paradise will be opened for him and he will enter through whichever one he wants this hadith in sahih muslim so make wudu recite the the kalima ashhadu alla ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu and all eight gates of paradise will be opened for you and you can enter from whichever you want so this is why we say the hadith are they have the, the keys to goodness look at the goodness of knowing the knowledge of the ahadith another one about the wudu there is one hadith which says that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever performs wudu and then he says subhanak allahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik we know this dua right when do we recite this dua at the majlis so whenever at the end of a majlis we recite this dua subhanak allahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik So the hadith says, whoever does wuzu, and what is wuzu? Wuzu is the key to prayer. Miftahul, miftahus salat tuhur. 
So purity, wudu, is the key to your salah. If your key is not right, will the door open? So if your wudu is not right, if it's not done the way Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did it, will your salah be accepted? So we need to learn our wudu, we need to learn our actions, we need to make sure they are in accordance with the sunnah. So as we continue this hadith where Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever does wudu, and then he recites his dua, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu Allah ilaha illa anta astagfiruka wa atubu ilayk. These words will be written on a paper. So which paper? Paper of this dunya? A4 size, A3 size, so paper of upstairs in Jannah, right? So these words will be written on a paper and then sealed. So a seal will be put on, put on that paper. And the seal will not be broken till the day of judgment. Look at the goodness. Where did we learn this from? From the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu So somebody who's done an action and which has been sealed and kept till the day of judgment, will he not have a good ending? So that's why the hadith of Rasulullah are khawatim al khair. They bring goodness. The endings are good. So from this ahadith and these evidences, what did we learn? That the key to Jannah, what is the key to Jannah? La ilaha illallah. The oneness of Allah. So we need to make sure we understand La ilaha illallah. Correct. What's the correct understanding of La ilaha illallah? And only with the right foundation of Aqidah Tawheed and with the correct understanding, we will be able to enter Jannah. So inshallah ta'ala, in the coming weeks, we intend to focus more on the ayat and the ahadith, explaining a tawheed and trying to understand them to make sure we improve and we make it, we make our tawheed, our understanding of la ilaha illallah strong. Why should we make it strong? What's the benefit for us? La ilaha illallah, tawheed is the reason for our sins to be forgiven. If a person is upon shirk, if he doesn't understand la ilaha illallah right, and he dies, he's got shirk, will his sins be forgiven? Allah doesn't forgive sin. Shirk is not forgiven unless you repent from it in this dunya. So if you, doesn't, if you don't fix your la ilaha illallah and your understanding of tawheed, and you die, you will not be forgiven. So we need to make sure we do it right. We need to make sure we understand la ilaha illallah. We need to make sure we understand tawheed to save ourselves from shirk. Otherwise, we'll end up in hellfire forever and forever. And second, this is the key to Jannah. So we need to understand it. We need to know this. This is the key. Can you open the door of Jannah with just Salah, with Zakat, with Hajj? Not without La ilaha illallah being right. Even if you pray the whole day, if your La ilaha illallah is incorrect, you will not be able to enter into Jannah. Another hadith for Abu Zarra radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, I was walking with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam on the stony ground in Al-Madina. So he's walking with Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in Madina in the afternoon when Uhud Mount came into sight. So they were in front of Uhud. And what is Uhud? Prophet sallallahu said, we love Uhud and Uhud loves us. And it's almost like in, in an area of six or seven kilometers. It's huge, the Mount of Uhud. And the Prophet ﷺ said, O oh, Abu Dhar, I said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, here I am responding to you. And the Prophet ﷺ said, If I had as much gold as the weight of Uhud, it would not please me. So if you have gold, the Prophet ﷺ said, If I had gold as much as Uhud, it would not please me. He's not pleased with having gold, having the dunya. And the hadith is long. I go towards the end, end of the hadith where it says, that the Prophet ﷺ told Abu Zar now, Abu Zar, stay where you are till I come back to you. So the Prophet ﷺ said, stay where you are, I'll come back to you. Till I come back to you, don't move from here. He ﷺ walked ahead a little further in the darkness of the night and disappeared from my sight. So Abu Zar couldn't see him. I heard a loud voice. So Abu Zar who is waiting here and he hears a loud voice like an explosion. I said to myself, the messenger of Allah might have met a mishap or an enemy. 
he might be in trouble there might something might have happened i just hear heard an explosion imagine his situation so the most beloved person to all of us is who rasulullah sallam more than ourselves and he is a sahabi imagine their love for rasulullah sallam and he is telling i heard a loud voice and i am afraid that maybe prophet sallam came into some problem so he is telling i wished i could go after him so he wishes to go to see what what can he do to see if rasulullah is in a problem but but i remembered his commanding me to stay till he come back look at the situation so you have your emotions you have your love for rasulullah sallam imagine your child imagine somebody you love and you are afraid that they are in a problem so he had that emotion he had that love for rasulullah sallam but along with that he remembered the command of rasulullah sallam that do not move from here until i come back what did he do so i waited for him this is what we need to learn this is what the sahaba were upon if something comes from the rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that's the final thing for us that's the final verdict if rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam did this i'm going to do this i don't care what my emotions are so don't let your emotions take precedence over the command of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam so i waited for him and when rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam came i made a mention of what i had heard so i told i heard an explosion and he asked did you hear it i said yes then he said it was jibril so jibril normally used to come and with revelation but this time he came with a special revelation special sound special explosion because this was a very important thing that he was going to reveal so it was jibril who came to me and said what did jibril say to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he who dies among your ummah without having associated anything with allah will enter jannah look at the glad tidings so if you are a muslim if you are from the ummah muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you have not done shirk with allah you will enter jannah <coughs> such a big blessing i said even if he committed zina or steals question was even if he is somebody who did zina in his life or he was a robber he used to steal people he said even if he committed zina or steal this is the blessing of tawhid if your la ilaha illallah is right because if your la ilaha illallah is right if your understanding of tawhid is strong firstly you will have the khashiya of allah you will have the fear of allah when you believe in one single allah when you do not do shirk with allah you will be strong you will have the fear of allah so with that khashiya you will not do sins even if you based on your human weakness kullu bani adam khata'in all children of adam are sinners if you make mistakes you will repent even if you end up dying on your sins there is a chance because you have not done shirk with allah if allah wills he will forgive you if he wills even to punish you still you have a chance because you are on la ilaha illallah you will complete your punishment in hell and come outside you go back to jannah but if you don't have this right if your la ilaha illallah is not right if your tawhid is not right it's going to be difficult so it's very important to learn tawhid this is the greatness of tawhid another hadith indeed allah will distinguish a man from my ummah before all of the creation on the day of judgment so imagine yawmul qiyamah and there's this one man coming in front of everyone in front of allah allah will bring him in front of everyone and 99 scrolls will be laid out for him so 99 records of deeds what deeds bad deeds and what was the size of the records will it be a4 or a3 or a2 no this deeds these records are the hadith says each scroll is as far as i can see so as far as you can see that book is a record of his bad deeds and 99 such books of bad deeds and allah subhanahu wa taala will then ask him when he's got this 99 <coughs> records of bad deeds and this huge size allah subhanahu wa taala will ask him the first thing allah will ask him do you deny any of these do you deny have those who recorded this wronged you did my malaika the angels who were writing down your bad deeds did they wrong you did they do zulm upon you is any of this something that you didn't do when they wrote it down do you deny that no i didn't do this why from where did they get this and what will the slave say 
he will say no o lord i did all of this so he's accepting he's saying no o lord he doesn't deny any thing that is written of his bad deeds allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says do you have an excuse do you have an uzr do you have a reason why you did that do you have an excuse he will say no o my lord i don't have any excuse who will have an excuse in front of allah for doing the wrong deeds he says no o lord i have no excuse and what will allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says allah will says rather you have a good deed with us that is one good deed you have rather you have a good deed with us so you shall not be wronged today there will be no zulm upon you you have one good deed and all this bad deeds so the good deed will be brought in the form of a card you know this credit card size bataka we call it in arabic bataka bataka madiniya in arabic we call it so bataka is like a size of a credit card 99 records as big as as far as your eye can see full of bad deeds and one card size of a one good deed that he had and on that card it was written i testify to la ilaha illallah and i testify that muhammad is his servant and messenger he will say bring your scales so it will be ordered to bring the scales to measure this is this are the bad deeds and this is the card with with the good deed and the the slave will say oh lord what good is this card next to this scrolls this is one card so small and this are huge amount of bad deeds that i have done what will i get out of this allah subhanahu wa taala says you shall not be wronged there will be no zulm upon you you shall not be wronged we will measure so when they put in the scales in the mizan on one side all his records 99 records of bad deeds and on the other side his belief in la ilaha illallah what will happen the la ilaha illallah this card of la ilaha illallah will be heavier than all these bad deeds so what has saved him that day his correct belief in la ilaha illallah so your belief in la ilaha illallah your belief in tawhid should be as strong as a mountain so that saved him that day as hadith says and the card will be heavy nothing is heavier than the name of allah because he believed in it so let us learn the aqeedah of tawhid another hadith where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said o son of adam so allah is referring to us we are the children of adam right o son of adam so long as you call upon me and ask of me so whenever you call upon you need to call upon allah when you ask from you need to ask from allah as long so long as you call upon me and ask of me i shall forgive you for what you have done allah will forgive you for what you have done and i shall not mind o son of adam were your sins to reach the clouds of the sky and were you then to ask forgiveness of me i would forgive you So even if your sins reach the skies and you ask for forgiveness Allah will forgive you O son of Adam were you come to me with sins nearly as great as the earth and were you then to face me ascribing no partner to me I would bring you forgiveness nearly as great as it So two things Allah mentioned in this for being getting this benefit that whenever we ask for forgiveness Allah will forgive us even if it's as big as the whole earth first is that whenever you call you call upon allah alone you don't set partners with him whenever you ask for help you ask from allah alone this is key this is tawhid this is oneness of allah and we need to learn this another command where the prophet says where allah subhanahu wa taala says in surah muhammad ayah 119 fa'lam annahu la ilaha illallah wastaghfir li zambik first you need to know la ilaha illallah so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying seek the knowledge of la ilaha illallah and then seek forgiveness for your sins 
so first thing is before forgiveness you you could do sins for hundreds of years but first if you have your understanding of la ilaha illallah correct and then you ask for forgiveness if your la ilaha illallah is not correct even if you ask for forgiveness and your la ilaha illallah is not correct you will not get forgiven so the first thing the preceding thing is to make sure your knowledge is of la ilaha illallah is right and been based on this aya imam bukhari formed a bab in 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 bukhari which says al ilm qabl al qawli wal amal so knowing la ilaha illallah is first and then you take the action of asking for forgiveness so this statement of la ilaha illallah is concise and it includes in it everything it includes following the sunnah it includes the prayers it includes the zakat it includes the hajj so it is extremely important to learn tauhid and la la ilaha illallah to save ourselves from shirk and inshallah we'll continue on this in the coming weeks to understand all the ayat and hadith uh, to understand have the right understanding of tauhid inshallah taala sakallahu khairan subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik